Hello, it's Emma Jo here from Lavinia Stamps and today I'm going to be showing you how to make a pair of forest cap toadstool earrings using shrink plastic and as if by magic I happen to be modelling them. Whoa! Extreme close-up please, camera one. Can you see? How cool are they when you think the size of the stamp is about so big and they shrink down to just the right size for a dangly earring. How cool. Anyway, we're going to be doing that using shrink plastic, Posca pens and a little bit of water. And it's going to be magic. There will be other things along the way, but don't you worry. I will put them down on a list and you'll have bullet points to follow along the way. Sound like a good idea? I think so. Why don't you come along with me and we'll have a go. Anyway, enough chat up here. Let's get down to the business end. Hello. So here we are down at the business end. Um, for this, we're going to need some, whoops, bear with, archival ink, jet black. The stamp that we're going to be using, which is Forest Cap Toadstool and an acrylic board for it to sit on. And also some Sizzix shrink plastic paper that you can get from Lavinia Stamps on their website or, or through the shop. OK, let's shuffy these out of the way. Come back to that in a second. I'm going to pop down this piece of shrink plastic, landscape styly with the frosty side up because that's the side that's going to take the ink. Okay, so I'm getting my archival ink and I'm going to ink it up, making sure to get every part of our toadstool covered. It's a lovely stamp, this one, isn't it? Okay, so I am now happy that I have got enough ink on there. And I'm going to turn it around and stamp. Here we go. Now, the trick to this is to put a lot of pressure on it and give it a fair amount of time so that the ink can do its work and transfer nicely onto the shrink plastic. Come on, my lovelies. Come on, my lovelies. So, I'm going to count to ten and then I'm going to risk it for a biscuit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Here we go. Fabulosum est. Happy days. I'm happy with that one. Okay. So I am actually going to show you how to do one of these, which means that you might have an odd earring, but you can always go back to the start and do it again to make a pair. The next step is to cut out the toadstool. But before we do that, we need to grab a Posca pen and a pencil. Okay, so I've just grabbed, doesn't matter what colour, and I'm going to put this Posca pen just at the top of the toadstool. So if you can see here, I am actually just going to draw around this pen so that we create the place to put the earring hook. OK, so I'm just going to go a little bit closer so that the corner, the edge of the Posca pen touches the toadstool and I'm going to draw most of the way around it. OK. So you get this circular place at the top. And this is a guideline for us when we're cutting. OK, so you should now have this lovely circular piece at the top of your toadstool. I'm just going to draw a circle in the middle there because that's where I'm going to want to punch. A hole. I'm just going to want to punch a hole. Okie dokie. So we now have to cut this out. 
The trick with cutting this out is to create a smaller bit of plastic. Now, just remember that you can use this plastic again. No, obviously not the bit you've stamped, but any cut-offs, keep them because they'll be useful. And we will be using a little bit of it anyway. So I'm going to cut a rectangle as close as I can get to this toadstool without annoying it. Okay, so that's one side off. I'm going down this side now. And I'm going to cut across here. And you may wonder why on earth is she making us do this? The reason is, my friends, whoop, that if you if you try and cut it out of the whole piece straight away, the weight of the plastic drags against the scissors and can cause a crack. So that's why I'm saying cut it out into a smaller shape first. All right. Now, I'm going to go as close as I can to this stalk because I want the actual shape of the toadstool. OK. You can go as close or as far away as you want to. After all, it's your earring, but this is what I'm doing for mine. And I'm probably going to speed this up because, let's face it, you don't need me to show you how to cut this out. Okay, as you get to the bit with the dots, you're going to actually lose these dots because although they're pretty on a piece of paper when you're printing a picture, when you're doing earrings, we don't actually need them and they won't be seen. Um, and it takes away from the shape of the toadstool. OK, so we're just going to go all the way down. And forgive yourself for not having Lavinia dots just this once. Okay, so I'm now going to punch a hole into our little circle for the earring hook, okay? So I've got this punch from a set of three at Lavinia Stamps, and I must admit I've used it for lots of things that I've done. The stamp is the biggest one. You can see the size of the hole here. Um, and I must admit, I've had these for a while now and they haven't let me down. So I'm just going to punch it. I'm saying this like you can see, so I'm just double checking. OK, I'm just going to pop that in there. And punch. And there we go. Bear in mind that that is going to shrink down. Oh, and another thing to say, if you have got tiny little cracks in your plastic, don't stress over it because those cracks, bear in mind, will shrink as as well as your plastic. So they're barely noticeable, so don't stress over them, is my message to you. OK, so now we're on to colouring our toadstool. We're going to be using Posca pens. So I've chosen red, orange, yellow, and I'm going to use that for the toadstool cap. Obviously white. Then I've got a little bit of navy, that comes in a bit later, some pale blue, green and pink. And I am going to bring that white here so that you can see that. OK. When I'm painting, I like to have some paper towel with me just because it helps me soak up any accidents that you might have. Oh, that sounds awful. I mean, when, you know, if you've got too much paint or anything, or you've got a giant blob, a giant blob of water 
that you don't want. Okay, so I'm ripping a little piece of paper off just for those emergencies and I'm going to use this to clean my brush and get any excess water off. Obviously, I've got some water here as well. Right, so I'm just going to pop into shot so that you can see what we're up to. This, if I pull this down, this toadstool. So that's where we're aiming. Okay, everybody see what I'm doing? Fabaroonie. Now we're going to be using our Posca pens as, oh, hang on, paintbrush. I'm using a Lavinia Stamps paintbrush. It's number one, just so you know the size. It's quite diddy. And it's just what we need for this. OK, you remember I talked to you about the plastic offcuts from before? Well, I'm just going to take an offcut from that piece and I'm going to be using that as my palette. I don't know if you can see it. There you go. And I'm going to show you now how we're going to use Posca pens as paints, which is great because it means that we can mix them. OK, here we go. If you just press your nib down, gosh, that was a good one. You press your nib down, you will get a bubble of Posca paint. OK. And I'm just going to add a little bit of water to that and stretch it out a bit. OK, just give it a wipe because there was a nasty little bubble halfway up my brush and I didn't want it there. OK. So I'm going to start colouring this. Now, to get a 3D effect, I'm going to start with red on the outside, then go to orange, and then in the centre there will be a streak of yellow. Now, I'm going to do this, and I might speed it up a little bit. Don't worry if you've gone over the lines for those little dots. We are going to be absolutely fine putting your Posca, Posca pen white on top of that. Don't worry. OK, so that's the cap. Now, I'm going to put some white on my palette. And I have got a little bit of water in there, not much. And I'm just going to do this stalk, OK? I've made quite a dark green using the dark blue and the green mix them together and what I'm looking for here are these little pebbles that look like they're hiding behind something if they've got something overlapping on the top it means that they are the furthest away and those are the ones that I am going to paint with this darker color There we go. And I'm going to turn the lights. I'm going to turn the lights on in that window because I don't want these to blend. I'm deliberately doing things that aren't next to each other. 
so that they can dry. But I do want something to blend. I want a little bit of red, which I'm mixing with the yellow to make a slightly paler orange than the one that we have. And I'm just going to put it in, dab it into the windows closest to me. Okay, well, I'm happy with that. I just need that to dry. And now using that orange, I'm just going to start painting my flowers. The only rule I have is I don't want orange and orange flowers next to each other. So in other words, keep your colours separate. Okay, so we're at this point now where we start to do the magic. I'm going to turn my toadstool sideways on. I'm going to be using scissors to hold it down. Now, what I would recommend is that you pop it on a random piece of card or some blocks of paper if you have, just to protect your mat. Okay, and I'm going to hold my scissors like that, she says. I'm not left-handed, so this could be a bit handed so bear with what I would say to you is don't panic you're probably going to look at it and think oh for goodness sake this is all going horribly wrong how do I keep control of it there we go it's going can you see and what I would say to you is don't worry it will curl itself up into a little ball Woo! but it will sort itself out with very little intervention. Honest Gov. Now I have got, waiting in the wings, a rather heavy old sketchbook of mine, just to give it a quick iron. So that's what I'm going to do now. Quick iron. Right have to be long but just long enough Ooh. there we go man that's magic so it's amazing isn't it look it's gone from that there's an original sized one to that how super cool is that anyway let's turn these into earrings so this is the part where we turn our little shrinky shrinky toadstools into earrings and for this I've chosen to use a French hook and a pinch bail. I like the French hook shape because it's so elegant and simpler and it suits me, suits me. So I've picked up my toadstool. I keep wanting to call it a mushroom so I apologise if there's always a bit of a gap. It's just me getting it right. And I've got some round nose pliers as well because they're going to help me do the job. OK, so I'm just taking my pinch bail and the idea is that it goes either side of that hole. And guess what? We pinch it. Or in my case, drop it. So take said pinch bail, pop it into the hole and I'm just going to pinch it by hand first. And then I'm going to take my round nose pliers and just give it a bit of persuasion that that is really where it wants to live. Okay, so I'm happy now. So you can see that that is now basically a pendant if we wanted it to be. So I've got my pendant and I've got my pinch bail and I'm just going to slip the French hook through the pinch bail loop and give it a gentle wait for it, a pinch. Okay, so two sides have now created a loop 
and I'm just going to close this front bit as an added precaution and we've now got an earring yay thank you for coming along with me on this creative adventure where we made these earrings I hope you get as much fun out of them as I have I wear them a fair bit now <laughs> anyway um, please feel free to leave any comments you want in the post below and you know what leave me a picture as well I'd love to see what you make thank you very much everybody for joining me it's been an adventure hopefully see you again soon take care bye <laughs>